All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at sensory perception. Now, before we can actually look at what sensory perception is, we need to break down what is the definition of sensory or sensation and what's the definition of perception. Now guys, a sensation is a conscious or subconscious awareness of an external or internal stimuli. So in our body, we have lots of different receptors that are gonna be able to detect when changes occur, whether that just changes outside here in the external environment or inside in the internal environment. <clears throat> this receptor is going to take that signal and it's going to send it through the nervous system. Okay, the nervous system is going to take this up to the brain and then the brain is going to do the next step. This is this is the conscious awareness and interpretation of the sensation, which is called the perception. It's how you perceive what change has taken place. Okay, what that stimulus has done. So sensory perception is the ability to receive that sensory input. So you're able to collect it but then you're also able to translate that stimulus or data into a meaningful type of information in the brain. It allows you then to make a decision and do something with that information. Now we have five main senses that we utilize. We have vision, hearing, taste and smell. Those top four are what we call special senses. And the reason they're called special senses is because they are located specifically in one area of your body. Okay. Your vision is located solely in your eyes. Your hearing is in the ears. Your taste is on the tongue. Your smell is in the nose. And so they're in a very specific special location. Touch is more of what we call a general sensation because it's spread throughout the whole body. Okay, so these are the kind of main types of sensations that we deal with. Now, when we look at these senses, some of them have these special receptors, like you can see here, and special structures. And all these structures have to be able to function properly in order for the sensation to get to the brain, and then in order for it to be interpreted and perception to take place. So if we look here, um, I've listed only, I've only shown you the structures really for the ear and the eye because they are more specialized. And if they are affected, um, the quality of life of the individual is more affected than what taste and smell would be. Um, touch is a little bit different, but those receptors are so different that just didn't include them here. Uh, but when we look here, we can see with the ear, you have the outer part of the ear, which is the oracle and the ear canal. This is going to direct sound into the ear. This is then going to hit onto the tympanic membrane or what we call the eardrum. The eardrum starts to move, which causes the movement of these ossicles, which are super small bones, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. Those bones move back and forth, which then moves in a secondary tympanic membrane into the area of the inner ear. The inner ear is composed of the semicircular canals, the vestibule, and the cochlea. As we see the sound wave moving through the cochlea, this is going to come in contact with that auditory nerve or what we call the cochlear nerve, which is cranial nerve number eight. And it's going to take the signal for sound to the brain so the brain can interpret what you are hearing. All right, so all these structures need to be functioning and they need to work together. If any of them are affected or hurt in any way, we see that that sensation of hearing will be affected. With the eye, we do see that the eye is going to have multiple structures that are available. There's different muscles that help move the eye so that your range of movement or field of vision can be in multiple areas. We also see that the eye has special structures like the cornea, the lens, the layers of the eye are the sclera, the choroid, and the retina. The retina is the neural part which connects to the optic nerve, which is cranial nerve two, and that carries the information to the brain. The structure of the eye also has fluid in it. This helps slow down the light waves as they come in, allowing your eye to collect the information and to be interpreted again by the brain. All right, so these are just showing you some of those structures. Okay, they are very complex, but if any part of them is not working properly, it could affect the sensation. We see the same thing that if the taste bud is messed up or even the olfactory nerves in the nose or receptors that are in the skin, whether they're for hot or cold, pain, pressure, touch, if any of those are affected, it could potentially affect how you perceive the world around you. This could ultimately affect your quality of life. 
So when we look at variations of sensory perception, some of them could be a primary problem, meaning you developed the issue just to the sensation itself. The primary issue is you have a vision problem. You were born with a hearing issue. You can't taste properly. There's something that is primarily wrong with those structures. Secondary means that they develop due to something else. This could be due to a medication you're taking which makes your vision worse, a medication you're taking which affects your taste. Um, it could be secondary to an illness like with COVID causing you to not be able to smell and taste properly. That's a secondary issue but it causes a variation or a problem with your sensory perception. We also see that it could be acute meaning it's short term. Okay, where it's only a short term issue. So like with COVID, once you are over the COVID, we should see that your taste buds should be able to regain their ability to taste and your olfactory nerve should regain the ability to send the messages for smell. In other cases, it's a chronic problem. It's one that once it happens, it doesn't get fixed. It could be even a degenerative issue where it gets worse over time. We see this a lot of times with hearing and even vision as we get older. But guys, in reality, all of our senses start to become more dulled and not as good as we age. The variation of the problem could be congenital. The child could be born with an issue. This is even seen with cataracts. Some children are born with cataracts on their eyes. You normally hear about that in older individuals, but kids could have that issue. We also see that a child could be born deaf or born blind. That is a congenital problem or issue that they deal with at birth. It could also be like a cleft palate or a cleft lip. Okay, That would obviously affect their taste and their smell as well. All right, so we see there's lots of different degrees and issues with the congenital side. It could also be treatment related. The treatment you're receiving for something else, like a drug treatment or a certain kind of therapy, could ultimately affect your vision, your hearing, your smell, your taste, hey, your touch. And so that is something that could be an issue. Um, some medications that actually do cause issues with your senses are like antihistamines, antihypertensives, um, certain eye drops, um, anti-seizure medication, diuretics, chemotherapy, and even some antibiotics can cause issues. And then of course there could be an injury where you injure the eye or injure the ear. Okay, all of those kind of areas could injure those. Another injury could be a brain injury that ultimately affects the area that does the perception. So it's not just the part that has the sensory part that could be affected, it could be the part that's got to, to interpret it which is in the brain. What are consequences with sensory issues? Well, it does give a decreased quality of life. If you're not able to smell or taste things, things you don't want to eat as much. It's the, the pleasure of food is gone. And that's a real kind of simple one, but that's part of that. Um, it could also cause issues if you no longer can see or hear anymore. Hey, the quality of life changes. It also can increase you having an increased risk of falls. Like if you can't see properly, you may fall. If your balance is affected due to your ear and your inner ear, burns, okay, could obviously be an issue or even too cold. This is a problem with touch. If you can't tell if something is hot or cold, it could end up burning you or causing frostbite or something like that. We also could have increased pressure that could be a problem. So these are all things that the increase of these risks could be happening because you have lost a certain sensation. Other things could be like you can't taste spoiled food or smell spoiled food. Um, you might not be able to smell toxic gas or smoke. Or you could see in children, if they're not able to hear very well or see very well, they might have some developmental delays that take place. All right, so what are some risk factors when we're talking about this? Well, age is part of that. When we look at all of our senses, they do decrease with age. So as we get older, our vision is going to decrease, our hearing, all those different things. We also see there are some genetic components that could play a role um, when we look at issues with hearing or vision um, and even taste, smell, or touch. We could have side effects to medications. These medications could cause you to have like blurred vision. It could make you lose your sense of taste. Um, they could cause a ringing in the ear to take place. There's lots of different side effects that could occur. Injury could be a risk factor. If you've had the head trauma or if you've had like your ears boxed or if you've got a black eye before and there was trauma to the eye socket, all of those potentially could increase your risk. Chronic medical conditions, some of these are going to include like brain tumors or cancer. 
head injuries, of course, hypertension, strokes, um, even respiratory issues could cause problems with your smell and your taste. Um, we do see that those could be an issue. Smoking is going to increase your risk of developing issues with your senses. And then there's some occupational hazards. Some jobs, there's constant loud noise. And so because of that, you should be protecting your ears. In, in some jobs, there may be flying objects that potentially could come at your eyes. You would want to protect your eyes. And this is where wearing goggles may be important. Or like with, with welders, while they have that big, thick mask, it can cause injury to their eyes if they were to try to look at that. So those could also be risk factors that could be present. So assessment, we would want to do a history, a medical and social exam in that sense. If we want to find out about the patient, what potentially could be their high risk factors or things that are affecting them. A big thing we would do in these areas is a neurological exam. The neurological exam is going to see how these nerves are communicating and receiving information and sending them to their brain and how the person is able to interpret them. Neurological exams can be done relatively quickly, but they're going to test a lot of different things. They're going to test the mental status of the patient, the cranial nerves, which a lot of the special senses are connected to those cranial nerves. It'll also be able to um, assess how different sensations work together, like vision and balance. Um, we'll be able to check out a lot of different things with those neurological exams. We would also want to do maybe some inspections. This could be with eye exams, this is the external eye exam, but also internal eye exams where you're looking at the retina, testing eye pressure for glaucoma, those types of things. An otoscope is used to look at the ear. All right, so going in and looking at the tympanic membrane and all of that, making sure that part of the ear is clear and not infected. And we also see we could do a Romberg test. Romberg test is used for balance. Okay, this is where you have the patient stand with their feet together, their eyes closed and you see if they can keep their balance even when you're pushing on them in different ways. Okay, again, this is how those sensory receptors are sending the information and how your body is perceiving it in order to adjust with issues like balance. So these are just some examples that can be utilized for assessment. So let's take just a closer look at some of these sensory issues. Now there's a lot of different ones, but I'm going to hit on some of the main vision issues and hearing issues that we see. So myopia, guys, is one of the most common types of vision issues, and this is known as nearsightedness. You can see up close, but you cannot see far away. Lots of individuals have this issue. If you've got glasses or contacts, more than likely you have what we call myopia. This is where the actual bending of the light what for you to see is not hitting the retina properly and so we need those glasses or those contacts to adjust that so that you can see better. We then have presbyopia. Presbyopia happens with age. This is going to decrease the elasticity and the, ab the ability of the lens and the cornea to accommodate vision. And so presbyopia actually starts to cause an issue with um, hyperopia which means where um, you can't see up close. All right, so then they have a harder time. This is when you see individuals where they're sitting there with a paper and they are doing this thing where their arms, they're trying to find that sweet spot where they can see it the best. This eventually leads them to needing reading glasses. Well guys, if they already have myopia, then they can't just use reading glasses. This is when they have to get bifocals and this happens as we age. We then have cataracts. Cataracts can be congenital where kids are born with them or they can develop over time. And this is a clouding of the um, cornea and lens. It makes it cloudy. So instead of looking through saran wrap, you're looking through more like a wax paper and it's harder to be able to see and especially see details. Glaucoma is an increased pressure in the eye. We see there's fluid in your eye and that fluid should constantly be made but also recycled kind of at the same rate. With glaucoma, this is not happening. There's a buildup of that pressure and that pressure can ultimately put, dam put pressure on the retina which could cause damage and this could damage could be irreversible. And then we have macular degeneration. Guys, the macula is the back part of the eye and that's the part that is gonna take the, the details and be your most acute vision. When you have macular degeneration, that area starts to degenerate. It starts to atrophy. It starts to not function properly. And so a lot of times the patient's peripheral vision is good out here, but this middle vision is not. They have a hard time focusing there and they can see out here, but they cannot see there and they're losing a lot of their details. This only happens 
and older individuals, it is age related and it is going to continue to get worse because it is a degenerative type of disorder. Now with hearing, there's two types of hearing loss, kind of two categories here. There's the sensory and neural hearing loss. Sensory and neural hearing loss is whenever there's a problem with the cochlea or also the nerve that's transmitting the information from the cochlea to the brain, that's cranial nerve eight. If those inner ear structures get damaged, we see that that is going to be a sensory neural hearing loss. Damage to these areas can be due to exposure to very loud sounds like over and over again. This is why some occupations it's important to wear the hearing um, or wear the earplugs. Also though, this can be done by you wearing earbuds. When you wear earbuds and your music's too high or what you're listening to is too high, it can actually cause damage, but you may not see the damage until years down the road. Okay, but the damage is being done. So we need to be careful with that because it is going to be a gradual loss. You're not going to see a big issue right off the bat. Conductive hearing loss means that we are not able to conduct the sound from outside to inside correctly. This could be a problem with the external canal. It could be a problem with the tympanic membrane, the eardrum, or it could be a problem with the ossicles, those little bones. If those little bones are not able to move properly, this is called autosclerosis. Autosclerosis is going to be where there's a buildup of arthritis in that ear joint. That is a joint. And so we would want to try to get that bone growth to be controlled in order to send those signals properly. All right, so it's got two kind of issues here, sensory neural and then the conduction part of getting the sound to the inner ear. All right, so when we talk about treatment, primary treatment, the preventative part is to use protective equipment. Protective equipment's important whenever you're doing certain kind of like physical activities, like wearing a helmet for football players is important. That helps protect their brain, but also their senses. Wearing um, eyeglasses, wearing protective goggles or a hard hat on the work site. In science labs, it could be wearing the protective goggles to protect your eyes from fumes or chemicals that you might be exposed to. But these are gonna be those protective measures that are gonna help you keep you safe with keeping those areas covered in hazardous conditions. Another example of a primary type of treatment is when we put the eye ointments on newborns. When newborns pass through the canal, the birthing canal of their mothers, their mother, if they have a STD, it ultimately could affect their vision. We put this ointment on them to help prevent that from hopefully occurring. Okay, so their vision's not gonna be hurt by just passing through that canal where potential bacteria or viruses are present. Secondary, there's no scanning or secondary screening for taste or smell, but there is, of course, for hearing and vision. We do this with kids. This is why kids in elementary school and all do hearing tests in order to see that their hearing is developing properly, but also eye exams. And these can be done um, on a yearly basis. They can be done every couple of years, but those are gonna be those screening measures that are gonna help catch hopefully something early if there's a problem. Now, when we look at the other, this of course is if there's already a problem, surgical intervention might be needed. This might be for vision and you might see that individual does Lasix in order to improve their vision. Um, we also see cornea transplants might take place if we have issues in cloudying. Um, ear tubes, when we're talking about chronic ear infections may need to be put in to help drain extra fluid to prevent hearing loss. Okay, and then even uh, cochlear implants may be an example there. Pharmacology, the, when we look at the drug side, <clears throat> this could be ointments, this could be eardrops, eye drops, that sort of thing could be utilized when we talk about those. We also see that if it's an inflammation, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories or even painkillers may be needed to use if pain is part of that, like with glaucoma. Um, and so we do see that there are some the drugs that could be utilized. A lot of times though, guys, the treatment when we talk about sensory perception is going to be adaptive methods. These are gonna be based on what's really going on with the patient. And so when we talk about vision issues, this might be where the patient needs to learn braille so that they can still read and be able to interact with their environment. Um, they may need guide dogs in order to help with this. Um, using their um, walking stick might need to be helpful. For hearing loss, this might be sign language, learning sign language, or having the closed caption on when you're watching a show. 
There's lots of new technology that's developed all the time that might be utilized to help um, even make the quality of life better and better. If we're talking about a sensory issue when it comes to like hot and cold or touch, balance, that kind of thing, they may need their hot water heater set at a lower temperature to prevent burns from taking place if they can't feel that it's hot. They may need proper footwear if they have balance issues. The proper footwear may help them keep their balance better. And then also sometimes protective clothing might be helpful. When we talk about protective clothing, this might protect them from sunburns. It could protect them from cold like frostbite if they can't tell if something is getting really cold. And so there's lots of different adaptive type of methods that we could use um, if an individual has sensory perception issues. All right, again, if you got any questions, please let me know.